This is tutorial number two for snake, and this is going to be inputting the food and having the snake increase in length uh, for all of the food that it's that is eaten. We're also going to add the score variable in here to show how many pieces of food you've eaten throughout the game. Okay, so to make the food, I think it's really nice to have it the same size as a snake head. So rather than create the exact same sprite, I duplicate this one. I'm going to call it food and the food doesn't move around. So we can get rid of all these movement commands and clone features and everything, and we just have uh, food that is the same size. We probably want it to be a different color. Again, because I'm really boring, I am just going to use the same colors that I typically do for the demonstrations and have the food just look like this. All right, so the food, if you remember from the gameplay, pops up in random locations, and you have to touch it with the snake head or eat it with the snake head, uh, in order to get a score and, of course, increase the length of the snake. So we're going to say, when this is checked, we want our food to go to some random location uh, on our board. So we'll use our X and Y coordinates, and we're going to use our operators to actually pick a random position for X and pick a random position for Y. Now, if you look at our coordinate plane, if you're familiar with it, we don't want these to be off the screen. We don't want them to be way out here, which they can be. We don't want the food to be in the corner. Our limit, we would say, would be about this far. All right, and if you look at the limit here for X, that's saying 220, which means over here should be about negative 220, which I actually hit right there. And Y is 161, or 160, and negative 160. So I like to use those two numbers 215, 220 for x, and y about 160. So we can say pick random for our x is going to be negative 215, positive 215, and for our y we're going to use negative 160 to positive 160. So it's going to some random spot. I know the snake is moving right now, but sort of looking at the food right now, uh, the food is popping up in a different spot every single time. And that's what we want. So after it goes to this random position, we are going to want to have this thing forever keep moving to a random position every time the snake head touches it. So we'll say if touching the snake head, then we want to move to a random position. Rather than type all those numbers in and hunt for all those commands, we're just going to duplicate. We don't need this bottom part. We just want this random position that we go to. Let's see how we did. And so every single time I touch the snake head, we're going to a random position. All right, now is a great time to introduce our first variable, which is going to be score, where every time we eat a piece of food, our score is going to increase. So we'll go to variables. We'll say make a variable score. If we want it to appear, we can keep it checked. If we want it to go away, it can go away. There are certain variables we want to show, certain ones we don't. I would say score, the user would probably want to see to see what their score is. So we will say in the beginning of every single game, we want to set our score back to zero. And every time we're touching the snake head, we want to change the score by one. And which is happening here. All right, and when we reset, our score goes back to zero when we start a new game. Okay, now we're going to get into the point where every time we eat one of these pieces of food, our, our length of our snake has to increase a little bit. So we're going to go back to our snake head here, and we are going to see when we have all this movement, when you have these, uh, these clones created, we're going to have to start messing with this right here. How long do we wait after the clones are deleted? So we're going to need to make another variable here. And we're going to call it clone duration. All right, clone duration or the length of time that our clones are going to stay on the screen before they're deleted. So we're going to bring our clone duration into here. And that's how long we want to wait. 
In the beginning of every game, we're going to set our clone duration. About one second is good. So if we want to start that now, we can see that that's the length of the snake when we start. All right. Now we want that clone duration to increase a little bit every single time we eat food. So when we go back to our food, we can say every single time we're touching the snake, we want to change our clone duration by one. We can say one for now. Why don't we make it two right now, just so we can have it very pronounced to see how it looks uh, with our code. All right, so the snake is at length. All right, now we're not increasing for some reason. That's because we put this under here where we said set clone duration to one. We want to have that when the flag is checked. So the beginning of the game, we set our clone duration to one, not when we start as clone. All right, you can see our snake getting bigger now when we eat food. All right, clone duration is at seven. And you can see it's getting bigger as we go along. All right, for what I believe, one of the best numbers to use is to have our snake using or moving a little bit faster at five, and our clone duration increase is the best at 0.3. If you want to have a more difficult game, game, you can change those numbers around a little bit, but overall, that's about what we want. All right, so whenever we're touching the snake head, we're going to increase by 0.3. If you want to make that a little bit more Let's say 0 0.3, just so it looks a little bit more pronounced. All right, and then of course, when the game is restarted, our score goes back to zero and our clone duration goes back to one. Last thing we want to do is we don't really need to see the clone duration because we can see the, the snake getting bigger. So we can check that and have it go away to make it look like a little bit more clean screen for the gameplay. All right, the very last tutorial we have, Snake 3. We'll talk about losing the game when the uh, snake crashes into itself or when it crashes into a wall.